that I've wanted to watch since the beginning of the stream. It popped up. It's probably going to be, like, not for everyone, but this is the kind of shit that I live for, bro. The second you discard a good candidate because of their skin color, the system is shit and it's racism, period. Niara, absolutely agree with you. So, this video, I love this guy, by the way. Uh, it doesn't end well. Are you prepared for deflation? The true black swan. I can tell you from experience that in my last company that had three people, which two of them were women, they didn't do well d uh, during interview, but they wanted more women in company. Uh, how are they now? Now that they're working for the company, though, Mr. Bongi. Still bad, or uh, are they actually decent? Are you prepared for deflation? That's right. I said deflation. We have to remember, we live in a world of probabilities, not certainties. And although my base case is that we go through long-term stagflation, it doesn't mean that in the interim, we can't have bouts of deflation where price- Deflation is actually worse, I think. Uh, according to a lot of economists, deflation is actually worse um, than, than inflation. Especially asset prices come crashing down. And like I said, although it's not my base case, I think there is a very strong argument for deflation. I'm going to reveal that to you right now in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, let's go over the wealth effect, or in this case, the reverse <laughs> wealth effect. Yeah. To understand this concept. I am. Under that's exactly it. I'm reverse wealthy. That, that's it. I'm, I'm reverse wealthy. Sell before deflation, buy after it. To the clip from Investopedia. The wealth effect is a psychological phenomenon that causes people to spend more as the value of their assets rises. The premise is that when consumers' homes or investment portfolios increase in value, they feel more financially secure, so they increase their spending. Conversely, when consumers see the value of their homes or portfolios fall, they tend to spend less. The Wealth Effect attempts to explain why consumers might change their spending habits even if their income and fixed costs have stayed the same. This is what I spoke about um, yesterday as well as earlier today with the video game industry. It's right now the party is going, you know, all the video game companies are making mad bucks, uh, cash shop games are everywhere and they're making crazy money. But that's because everyone's been making crazy money, you know? The, the bubbles are just massive. The stonks just kept growing. To the moon was a massive thing. Governments were printing money as if it was going out of fucking style. So people were swimming in cash. And this meant that people could really splurge on all of these video games. But now, if things were to turn around, uh, you would get to a place where, well, suddenly I don't have money. And now I start going, I feel less comfortable in spending that money. Yeah, shit going to the moon, exactly. Like you could buy land or, or, or for a house for one month's salary. This kind of happened in Hungary when the Russians went out. At least a lot of land was going for chump change. I mean, there is, look, there's a lot of money to be made in inflation as well as in deflation. You just have to know where to look for it. Here is an example of how the wealth effect works. Kiki purchased a house for $300,000 in 2007. She earned a $100,000 salary and her average expenses, including housing, were $75,000 per year. In 2008, the Great Recession lowered her home's value to $260,000. Kiki's income was still $100,000 and her expenses were still $75,000. But she cut back on her variable expenses because she was concerned about the drop in her home equity. She started spending $60,000 a year instead of $75,000. In 2013, brother. when her home's value rebounded and grew to $320,000, Kiki felt more secure as her home equity increased. While her income was still $100,000 adjusted for inflation, she increased her spending to $85,000 because of her newfound oh, sense yeah. of wealth. And this does happen. This does happen. There's actually a massive correlation between housing prices and the perceived amount of money that people would be willing to spend uh, in a month. Because most people look at their house as the most important asset that they own. Buy a Dragonfly pre-order or pay for a six-month sub? Samurai, uh, neither. Why would you do either of those two things? 
So right off the bat, I think the example used with Kiki, <laughs> or whatever her name was, isn't that great. It describes what most economists consider the wealth effect, so that's good. But I don't think their definition or their view, their concept of how this works is accurate at all. I think it's very incomplete, to say the least. First and foremost, they gave the example of her house going down during the GFC to 260,000 from 300. Yeah, guess again. <laughs> Try going down from 300 down to about 160, if you remember the GFC and prices going down from 2006 yeah. all the way to 2012. Another thing that I think made it a little less than accurate was they only- Look, if you know, so I would say, um, I would say if you know you're going to play Dragonflight no matter what, and you want to do it now while you still have cash and you know you're going to be spending a lot of money later in the year and you don't really know if you want to be spending that money later in the year, then yeah, sure, pre-order the game. I'm not going to stand in your way. I would prefer if pre-orders didn't exist at all, um, but I'm not going to judge someone who actually does just pre-order the game because they know they're going to be playing it. Uh, there, I have a much bigger problem if we're arguing between two things. So, Samurai, to some of yours, if you ask me my my opinion on a six-month sub versus the pre-order, I'd much rather you pre-order but only pay a monthly sub. The six-month sub, as far as I'm concerned, is just a schemaz in terms of World of Warcraft because it guarantees Blizzard six-month money, even though they don't have to deliver content within those six months. Uh, so, I would much rather you pre-order but only pay month to month and only pay if you're actually uh you know getting content and you're actually playing like immediately stop paying uh, stop paying as soon as you stop playing as well because you can always resub later on right well mobile well, supposed to be pay to win too like uh, diablo immortal avalanche i mean it's always going to be right i think the actual pre-order bonus is trash which is only the one paid if you pay beforehand you're incentivized scamming you on the final quality of the product Pre-order died for me when I didn't have to buy a physical disc. Really physical discs that make pre-orders cool. impact of the spending that Kiki was doing. Her income stayed the same. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. But then they said the main component... I don't think it's launched yet. Is, is Has Kiki it? Is Kiki spending less or is she spending more? If she's spending less, then this could have a negative impact on the economy. The yeah. reverse wealth effect. And if she is spending... Dude, this is actually... I was watching this economist explain this last night, actually. Uh, this is actually one of the worst things about inflation. Inflation is kind of like a self-fulfilled property. So as fears grow of inflation, even though, technically speaking, um, the country, America, is technically not in a recession. Not yet. Technically speaking, America is not in a recession because a recession is when you have negative growth two quarters in a row, right? The, the second quarter have not been announced yet. So technically speaking, America is not yet within a recession. But as fears grow of a recession, people stop spending money because they're afraid of a recession. The fact that they stop spending money drives the economy towards a recession because they're spending less money, meaning that the country is going to see negative growth because without people spending money, there isn't going to be positive growth. And this then drives the country into a recession. Recessions then grow inflation fears. Because inflation fears keep grow gr growing, um, companies start getting more and more bearish on uh, buying things and buying product because they're afraid of these recessions coming. So they'd rather hike their prices a little and have fewer stock on hand. This then grows inflation. And before you know it, you have high inflation and you have a recession. And it's basically all been like psychological. It's a psychological effect. You've plunged yourself into this recession. Um, and now you're dealing with a real recession, even though the reason for the recession is psychological. So basically, by the time people start fearing a recession, you're already fucked. More than this has a positive impact on the economy. Typical mainstream Keynesian economics, where they only focus on the demand side of the equation. But like I said, my biggest problem with the video is how incomplete it was when you think about the impact asset prices like housing and the stock market have 
on the overall economy. To illustrate my point, let's go over what I think is a little bit better example. So instead of geeky, we've got everyone's favorite, Moody the Millennial. And Moody wants to buy a house because they think that prices always go up. Prices have been going up since 2012, and we know that this is a really yeah, that's smart that investment. fallacy, so right? Really Housing prices is just always going to go up. Okay, well, let's just pretend for a moment that the house hasn't been built. So insert Builder Bob. He comes in with all of his workers to build this house because he sees that demand is outstripping supply. So he sees a. This is heavily happening in Cape Town right now, by the way. Uh, Cape Town has an incredible demand as people are. Um, semigrating to Cape to the Western Cape at an alarming rate. So all over the country, people are moving to the Western Cape because the Western Cape is the only province in South Africa that is mildly competently run. The issue is there's no fucking supply. Houses are in incredible short supply in, in the Western Cape. So prices are fucking high in the Western Cape and boulders are building everywhere like wherever i go wherever i drive there's like apartment complexes going up and townhouse complexes going up it's just everywhere uh builders are having the time of their lives in cape town because they know there's massive demand very little supply the issue is what happens when this turns around which is currently happening my my government my central bank here is consistently upping interest rates. At some point, the interest rates are going to get high enough to the point where people no longer want to buy homes because it's too expensive to do. As soon as that shifts, and this is what I'm waiting for, the housing market crashes. And when the housing market crash, you can pick up really good property. So we just found a property in uh, the preferred town, the town that I actually want to move to. Uh, the, The lady let us know just yesterday. This house is a thousand square meters, so it's a massive yard. The house is relatively small, but it's a decent house. It's an older house, massive yard, smallish house, but you can always just increase this. You can always build more uh, on the property. Uh, Swallendam from the Roinkies. The house is 1.5 million rand, which is fucking cheap. It is very cheap. That's like uh, in dollar sense, it's about let's say eighty five thousand dollars for uh, for the property, eighty five thousand dollars, which is so fucking cheap. We're probably going on Sunday to go look at the house, and uh, if it's if it's not falling apart, we'll probably we'll probably buy that profit opportunity. So after the house is built, Moody comes in and wants to buy it. Now, unfortunately, they don't have enough to pay for it in cash, so they have to go to the mortgage broker. Well, this is Mortgage Mike, so he comes in, gives the mortgage to Moody, so they can go ahead and buy the house, let's say directly from Builder Bob. So Mortgage Mike is making money off of this transaction. He's saying Moody, Moody, but yeah. (laughs) He makes a profit, he pays his employees, and they make money. Their purchasing power increases. That's not all. Because Mortgage Mike is really just the originator of the loan. Yeah. Who's creating the additional money supply is the bank. So then the bank is also making money on the transaction. And therefore, their share price most likely goes up. They're doing more business. So their shareholders also have more purchasing power. Uh That's not where the story ends. Because the bank doesn't keep that loan on their balance sheet. Oh, no, no, no. They sell it to Fannie and Freddie. They turn it into a mortgage-backed sausage, what I call it. Okay. Mortgage-backed security, by the way. <laughs> that goes to a pension fund. The pension fund then makes a return on that because Moody is making their payments every single month. This is the housing the crisis. This is how it started. And they use oh, that God. profit or that return on How did they not? Can I? Pay- okay, I just want to ask. How after 2008 did we not realize that mortgage-backed securities is probably not a good idea. How the fuck did that happen? After what happened in 2008, and we saw the incredible results of mortgage-backed securities fucking the world, how did governments around the world not step in and say, all right, no more of this bullshit. No more of this bullshit. If you give out a home loan, the money you make is from the person paying back the fucking loan with the interest that you're charging. 
Did they really add that many restrictions? From what I know, the, the restrictions were actually fairly fucking minimal. People typically do minimal research and just go, oh, I can make money on this. Let me just do this more. That if that is the issue, this is literally the issue that I have with the modern uh, corporate system that we have. The, the modern corporate system is one that only thinks short term. It never thinks about the long term implications of anything that they do. The banks don't for a second think, wait a second, if these things crash, we cause a crash within the world. Like the world crashes as a result of our shit. They, they just do it because who gives a fuck, right? Uh, look, when you're receiving very cheap houses, gifts, uh, you will just ignore the issue. True, someone wants to gift me a fucking house, I'm taking it, bro. I I'm not I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I, I, some people gifted me some games on Steam today. Uh, Sun Goddess uh, and also uh, Robotic. <clears throat> Um, someone else gifted me a, a God of War. Who g gifted me God of War again? Fuck. Name escapes me. Someone literally gifted me ga uh, Game of War today. Uh, God of War, actually. Thralls Mama. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Thralls Mama gifted me uh, God of War. So sorry. Thralls Mama. I completely fucking... Names and me. Not the best of friends. But people gifted me games today, and I will fucking take it. I will 100% take it. If you want to give me a house, I'm fucking taking it. You bet your ass I'm, I'm taking it. Is the politicians get bribed? Corporations don't get regulated? That My Little Pony game is a real gift that keeps on giving? Swanky Tiger, we're not talking about that. We're not mentioning that. Hey, the pensioners who use that to go into the economy and buy more goods and services. So just because the price of housing has gone up, which prompted Moody to go out there and buy all mm -hmm. of these individuals involved, Mortgage Mike, Builder Bob, the workers, the pension fund, the pension fund pensioners, <laughs> the bank, the shareholders, all of them have additional purchasing power to go in the economy and buy goods and services. And one thing okay. the Keynesians do get right is one man's spending is another man's income. True. So again, buy these True. home prices or stock prices going up and up and up and up, it creates more economic activity. So if home prices or stock prices or crypto prices Fuck you, King are Julian. Down, I'm not a brony. Down, 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 because the Fed is trying to create it's not a me, bro. It's not me. wealth effect to increase unemployment. Why? To bring down CPI. Yeah. You could have a dramatic decrease. They could overshoot. Remember, they overshot inflation. So why on earth couldn't they overshoot deflation or overshoot the reverse wealth effect? Because they don't understand it well enough. And that video from Investopedia perfectly illustrates how their view mm -hmm. of this reverse wealth effect is incomplete. Therefore, there's a significant probability that by trying to create so you're gonna if you're gonna create in deflation but oh my god you would have to overshoot quite heavily to create deflation right so you would have to hike interest rates quite high in order to get deflation the reverse wealth effect again they overshoot so inflation doesn't go from 8.6 percent down to two percent it goes from 8.6 percent potentially down to negative 2% or negative 3%, uh -huh. which is consistent with the inflation that we saw in the 1940s. In 1947, <laughs> That's high, bro. How would you guys feel about that level of inflation? Like, uh, would that make you feel good? <laughs> like, how many cash shop mounts are you going to purchase if inflation got there? Inflation? Why are we talking about that My Little Pony game? Oh, Aragos, because Sun Goddess thought that I needed My Little Pony in my life. Thrall's mama gave me a really good game. She she gave me God of War, and I love that. Sun Goddess kind of redeemed herself with Starship Troopers, but she did fuck herself a little with My Little Pony. You know, I, I've, I've kind of forgiven her uh, with the Starship Troopers game, but I'm still a little upset about the... Um, uh, uh, about the My Little Pony thing. Thrall's mama, what am I supposed to do? Your name is Thralls Mama. I just assumed. I'm sorry. Uh, to me, you're all basically sexless. I, I literally look at the name and I go, all right, there we go. The, that's, um, I, I just focus on the name. And the, if the name sounds female to me, I go, right, this must be a girl. 
Um, although, in saying that, we should probably also recognize the fact that there are no girls on the internet, so I should probably just call, call everyone dude. I'm not old enough to remember the effects, but they raised interest rates close to that in the 1980s in the US to get inflation under control. When was the, um, you wish you were a girl, throws mama? Why though? I, I would never want to be a fucking girl. It's a hard life being a fucking girl. It would not be easier. I highly doubt that. Dude, girls have like uh, fucking once a month life turns into hell. I would fucking loathe that. The the pain once a month. It's a ticking time bomb. You know that it's coming. It's And it's going to happen every single fucking month. No, no, no. Th that's not good. And also they have to give birth. That's a big fucking nope from me. There is no way that I would give birth to fucking anything in my life. That, that would be that would be a pain that I would not bring upon myself fucking ever. Um, when do girls play games? Never. Yeah, but a lot of girls will give birth. So, yeah, no, fuck that. All the way up to 19.5%. As high. Two to three years later, it was all the way down to negative three. In other words, we went from 19. A lot of countries no longer do cesareans. Deflation to three. My country wants to fucking outlaw it. Deflation. Step number two. Oh, but wait, there is more. Yeah. Unfortunately, our deflation argument doesn't end with what we went over in step number one. Uh -huh. Let's go back a little bit in time. So we discussed Moody buying a house. Let's just say in Phoenix and all of the economic activity. Oh, that happened. my country wants to. So South Africa has an incredibly high level of cesareans. I think I'm I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, the vast majority of women in South Africa deliver um, with surgery, not naturally. My country is on a massive push to try and change that. So they basically want to outlaw cesarean uh, unless medically necessary. So unless you have some medical condition that, that forces you to have a cesarean, uh, they want you to use a weight nurse. They want you to, um, they, they want you to give a natural birth, even though most women in South Africa don't want natural births. Uh, this is what my country wants to push for. Um, J, uh, I, Jmo, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm having trouble taking this gentleman seriously. He doesn't wear a tie and he's wearing a pink shirt. Dude, the guy is really smart, though. I, I, I do like his videos a lot. I, I watch his videos all the fucking time. So I was born. Uh, oh, wait, I get it now. C-sections do not allow the child's immunity system progress naturally. I was a C-section. All of my brothers were C-sections. And I am fucking fantastic because home prices were going up and up and up. And then we discussed about how the economic activity would decline if home prices start to go down because all of this that you're seeing here would not have happened in the first place. If we mm -hmm. go back to the GFC, most of you remember that all of that economic activity decreased. It contracted massively. And I would argue back then our economy wasn't near as dependent on asset prices as it is today. So let's think through what probably happened with Moody prior to... To be fair, I don't own them. pink shirts and I and would never own a pink shirt. Channel, so I'm right there with you, Swanky because Tiger. Because I don't know Moody's preferred pronouns and any good millennial out there will demand that you know their preferred pronoun. So anyway, chase hair. Why the fuck would you want chase hair, Saban Raven? California. And Moody is a school teacher. <laughs> of course they are, because you definitely want Moody teaching your kids all of the things that they were spoon fed and brainwashed by when they got their degree in liberal arts. <laughs> but but anyway, I'm going off on a. You think? Here. Wait. So, you think chest hair makes you more of a man? Mandatory, but it's nice when it's available. Dude, I have like four chest hair. That's it. I I'm not hairy at all. I, I have four chest hair, no back hair, very little hair on my arms, uh, very little hair on my legs. Uh, I don't think chest hair makes you more of a fucking man. By the way, I, I highly disagree with that. If you own a red shirt and a white shirt, the propensity to own a pink shirt may be out of your hands. 
That's only if you don't know how to wash it, though. Danger Duff. Needs a gold chain. Chase there and really strong cologne. Then I will trust these financial advice. Why does that... Why did they say this? But a lot of the guys wax their chest today. Dude, I waxed my legs once when I was, like, younger uh, in college. I will never fucking do that again. In my life, it is the most pain I have ever been in. It is horrible. Like, fucking horrible. My pronouns are, he's illustrious grand majesty, emperor of man, and my liege. Mine's just God. Booty in 2012, making 50 grand a year. They buy a house in California, say in the Bay Area somewhere. That seems Why would you buy a house booty. in California, and though? They buy a house, let's say 300,000, something like that. But in 2021, the can you buy a house in the Bay Area for three hundred thousand dollars? Has gone from three hundred thousand up to one point three million. Uh huh. So Moody sells the house, nets a million dollars, and then buys this house in Phoenix that we went over in example number one. But they only use about a hundred thousand dollars for a down payment to buy this new house. So they have a net gain of $900,000 of additional purchasing power. But let's remember that Moody is still a school teacher making $50,000 a year. Yeah. So how has she or they received <laughs> this additional purchasing power? It's by asset prices going up and the banks contributing to that by lending more and more and more money, creating more currency units to buy homes We're fucked, that are going dude. up and up and up We in are value. so fucked. So now let's assume Moody takes the additional 900 in purchasing power and uses it's all the banks, man. thousand to spend and 500,000 to invest. So they go on Instagram and they see all of their friends buying Sprinter vans and traveling across the country in pure luxury and bliss, taking all of these photos and selfies of themselves, standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon or going to Niagara Falls and just living out of their $150,000 Sprinter van. And uh -huh. they say to themselves, that Yeah, is it's all Moody's fault, bro. I Fuck want. Moody. So... This four hundred thousand dollars goes into this lifestyle and buying. Did you mark? I've heard that. I've heard that Johnson is uh, retiring. I'm not entirely sure if he will actually retire, or or step down, resign. Retire is probably not the right word. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's say. So there's five hundred thousand dollars left. That he already quit wisely. I only saw rumors before we started streaming. When did he actually quit? Want to invest. So, of course, they go to Mr. Ross Gerber. He is the man in California, especially in Silicon Valley. He takes all the money from all the Google workers and the Apple workers, and he says, I will invest in Monks, then how you doing, bro? For you. They say, Ross, what are you going to invest in? He says, oh, um, whatever it is that you like. That's what I'm going to invest in. Well, what about a return? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't care about that. Because all I care about is assets under management. So we've got this sign here, Ross saying, I love Fucking assets out. under management. But maybe what that sign could say is, I love whatever it is you want me to love. I okay. think Ross could have had a very successful career as a politician. But getting back to the story here. So Ross takes the 500000 he got from Moody, and he gives it to Startup Steve, who has just created... A business model. For Dude, I'm so lost right now in this fucking it's video. Going to change the world. <laughs> I've I've no it's idea where we are now. We've now. we've spoken and about so many fucking things so far. I have no idea what we're talking about. Walking app is now valued at a hundred and fifty billion dollars. Wait, there's an app to walk your fucking dog. And he goes in, spends that, and of course his workers and everything here that we discussed. In this example number one, with how on, how doing, would increase the purchasing power of everyone involved in this ecosystem as well. So it becomes very clear how if asset prices go down significantly for a sustained period of time, all of these dollars going into the real economy would simply disappear. 
So you've got this dollar uh -huh. gone, gone. Well, it's gonna take a long time. So editor, maybe help me out with that. But all of these dollars disappear. Therefore, economic activity plummets. And we can see a good example of this right now with the Oh, okay, I, I, I figured out where we are. So he's basically, he's trying to describe that the first step that he explained with the video and how the video sort of explains, you know, uh, what happens in inflation and deflation and all the rest of it and how houses create value. He's now trying to explain, like, there's more to this. So the problem is that the Fed, because that video comes from the Fed, the Fed understands the first part of uh, the equation. They understand how inflation is created in that sense, but they don't understand the second part of it, which is, it's not just the case of Moody bought a house, the house went up in value, so now Moody wants to spend more, or the house went down in value, so Moody wants to spend less. It also impacts the rest of the economy. So even the economy that has nothing to do with housing. So even the, the guys like Ross, for example, that Ross doesn't do anything with houses. Ross is an investor. Even Ross is impacted by the house. Merry guys, how you doing, bro? D&D character and some research for some details for this. Uh, I'm on. How you doing, brother? Uh, have a nice day. I don't know if you're leaving or if you're just arriving. You guys have been reading the news, I'm sure, where Terra Luna crashes, Celsius crashes, and all these other hedge funds and crypto platforms are either going out of business or suspending trading, suspending redemptions yeah. of your cryptocurrency yep. that they have. Yep. Why? Dude, crypto? <laughs> oh, if you're still in crypto, you have giant kahunas like fucking giant testicles i don't know why anyone would still be in crypto um good day i missed the whole stream sad raza how you doing brother cryptocurrency was and still is just a phase i don't know if uh, crypto is going to remain a phase because i've heard good arguments for and against um crypto uh especially as people keep losing sort of faith in the monetary system crypto could have a future but i think i think crypto as it exists right now is a fucking scam because they are paying out these massive interest rates 10 percent 15 percent even 20 percent well how are they making those returns because they were lending them those cryptocurrencies that yeah. you own to other financial entities that would take them and be happy to pay the 20 percent or 25 percent because they thought crypto would always go up and up and up. But what happens- The fallacy of the market. Down, then the whole house of cards comes crashing down with it. Yeah. So my point is the economy that we have built in the United States is very similar to that crypto ecosystem that has absolutely collapsed in a deflationary death spiral. So the main takeaway from step number one and Fuck. number two, is we have the Federal Reserve here that we know is trying to create the reverse wealth effect. But in my opinion, they don't- Yeah, I'm no longer in crypto. The degree to which that wealth effect impacts- I got out before it crashed States. though. So, so I won. All their nifty models- <laughs> I made some money off of it. That say that if they bring down asset prices by 30%, and I'm just using the, these numbers as an example, that unemployment will increase, let's say, to 6%. Mm -hmm. CPI goes down to 3%. But what if they overshoot? Because again, they don't understand how powerful the wealth effect is for the US economy. So asset prices actually come down by 40% because of raising interest rates, quantitative tightening, whatever it is they're doing to bring them down in the first place. Then unemployment, let's say, goes up to 15%. So bringing. Uh, Patlin, what would end, what's gonna end up happening, and this is uh, something that um, Jim Rickards actually spoke about. So the what's gonna happen is the Federal Reserve is going to continue uh, continue hiking rates, right? So they're gonna push rates up and up because they they want to get inflation under control. What's then gonna happen is the market is gonna have an absolute fucking meltdown, right? Because 
the economy, in order to get inflation under control, you have to crash the economy. It's the only way to get inflation under control. Right now, the reason inflation is as high as it is is because there's far too many people that want products and there's not enough products coming. So products are in short supply, which means, you know, it's going to cost more for all products. So the way you can stop that as a Federal Reserve is by crashing the economy. So by raising interest rates, people lose their jobs. As people lose their jobs, they have less money to spend. And because people have less money to spend, there's lower uh, demand for products. So the demand can reach uh, sort of equilibrium with supply. And the way you really fix it is by allowing for less uh, demand than there is actual supply. So that's what the Federal Reserve is trying to achieve here. Uh, is they're basically trying to crash the economy. Now, because the Federal Reserve has a two-part mandate, Fudgy Monkey, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the follow, really appreciate that. So the Federal Reserve is one of the few places in the world that has a two-stage ma uh, mandate. The first stage of their mandate is to ensure that inflation does not go too high. That's fine, that's most other central banks. The other part is to ensure that unemployment remains as low as possible. These two mandates uh, can't exist together. There's no way, because in order to get inflation under control, you almost inevitably have to create unemployment. So the, the Federal Reserve is sort of in a weird spot where it's going to have to betray one of its mandates in order to uh, achieve one, at least. It can't achieve both. Not, not when the economy is fucked, and especially not... They can't really continue printing money. They've already printed way too much money. Um, because that's really the only other way to stop inflation is just by printing yourself out of it. So you just keep printing a lot of money and hope that inflation goes away uh, on, on its own. Uh, so, so what they're going to do here is effectively, yes, they're going to over tighten. What's going to happen is you're going to have a taper tantrum as happened in 2016, 2017. The Fed is then going to reverse policy and they're actually going to go, okay, never mind, fuck it right? Uh, we'll lower it again. Now, what ends up happening when you have deflation, this is when your, your money actually gains value. So basically what this means is if you have $100 today, by next year, that $100 is worth more than uh, what it was like a year ago. The reason that is horrible for an economy is suddenly saving money becomes a, a much better option. They like, don't put your money in stocks, don't buy stuff, just keep the cash. So basically, economic activity grinds to a fucking halt. No one wants to spend money because your money is going to be worth next year more than what it was this year. So it ends up crashing an economy as well. Deflation is just as bad as fucking inflation at the end of the day. Monks, then you bastard. Thanks for the five community subs. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Vlach, how you doing? Can we get some hearts in chat? Five of you fuckers now have a sub as well. Uh, Monks, then really appreciate that, brother. The overall CPI is measured by the government. Wait a second. Is that real? NVIDIA have been subbed for four months in a row. Is all of that from gifted subs? <laughs> that's incredible. No one spends money. Small businesses die. People lose jobs. Can't spend money. Yeah, that's effectively what happens there, right? Man, I just want to survive, live my life, and play video games. Lord, this is depressing. Swanky Tiger, you and me both. We, the people that just want to live our lives. We want to be happy. We want other people to be happy. We don't want to interfere with anyone. We're getting fucked by government and by corporations that have acted irresponsibly and we're gonna end up paying the price you think bobby uh like um what's his name powell uh jerome powell you think jerome powell from the federal reserve is gonna suffer as a result of inflation or deflation no you think the politicians are gonna suffer because of uh, the fucked up economy no uh, you think bobby kotick is gonna suffer because of the fucked up economy no the people that's going to suffer is me and you. The, the people that just want to get a decent salary, live a decent life, you know, have a house, have a car, go on holiday maybe once a year, and for the rest of the time just play video games and, you know, sort of go and bar go to barbecues and stuff like that. Those are the people. The normal people are the ones that get fucked here. Negative 1%, meaning deflation. Step number three, Jerome Powell has a decision to make. And it's all about legacy. Yeah. Does he want to be remembered 
as Arthur Burns or Paul Volcker. Okay. Most of you probably don't even know who Arthur Burns was. I have no and idea. To a certain extent, that's my point. <laughs> but Arthur Burns was the Fed chair during the 1970s, and he is very well known for saying that inflation was transitory. He changed Ooh. the CPI, he omitted things, <laughs> and he kept claiming that there were these certain reasons we were going to have inflation, but eventually the CPI was going to come back down until 1975, where he had to admit that it was Does true. that sound uh, familiar? Was here Jerome today. Powell also said it's uh, transitory. That, Paul Volcker coming in and having the guts, the balls to break the back of inflation. This is how history remembers these two gentlemen. Oh, I'll tell you guys, because I don't know if he's going to go into it. Paul Volcker, you want to know what he did? He raised interest rates to 18.5%. He just fucking, he, he just went, okay, screw it. Uh, I think inflation at the time in the US was something like 16%. And he just, he just raised the rates to 18.5% and just said, fuck it. Yes, there's going to be a recession. Yes, I'm crashing the economy. But fuck it. You know, we have to get inflation under control because it doesn't really matter. But people who think, oh my God, you can't crash the economy. So many people are going to lose their jobs. You're a fucking moron if you think that losing your job is worse than inflation. Because you want to know what happens with inflation? Even if you have a job, you can't fucking pay for anything because it's too goddamn expensive. Everything just keeps growing. So it's better in the short term for people to just lose their jobs, for the economy to reset, for inflation to go down, and then to try and get it back, like, to try and solve an issue of runaway hyperinflation. Um, Volker, not Walker. No, Digimark. Anyone living on credit is homeless at 18%? Yeah. That is very true. Credit is going to fuck you at 18%. Um, but inflation will fuck you even harder, right? Look at the gas prices. People can barely afford gas to get to work and then to eat. And it's going to get worse, right? We need people to retire at a more useful position. Um, rehire at a more useful position. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. It's going to be interesting to see how the world deals with this, with this bout, right? I can promise you, you're getting into your 60s and your 70s. As a gentleman that is worth over a hundred million dollars, money isn't that big of a deal. At a certain point, you start thinking about your legacy and how is history going to remember me? Yeah. And I can guarantee you, Jerome Powell has two images in his mind right now. One, Arthur Burns. Fuck back and that sucks. Paul Volcker. So let me ask all the gentlemen watching this video right now. Uh, Trickstar. I would not be so sure. It's dropping now, but all of the economists are all saying this this drop is expected. They knew it was going to drop, but it is going to rise again. It's nowhere near its peak. Nowhere near. Uh, people don't understand what inflation does. Uh, it's the same thing where people are going, oh my God, the, the stock market. So twice last week. People went, the stock market has bottomed out, it's going back up. Because twice last week, what ended up happening is the stock market drops, and then it stops, it trades sideways for a bit, and then it actually goes up a bit. And people are like, oh my god, here we go, it's going up again, we're going to be fine. It only goes up for a little while, and then it drops again, but this time it drops lower to where it previously sort of sideways traded. This is normal within a market crash. Recessions don't happen all at once. It's not like just one day, bam, bam, everything goes up and down. It's more a case of it goes down a bit, then it sort of bottoms out, then it goes up a bit, then it comes down again, then it comes up again, and the fuel price is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to come down a little bit, and then it's going to stop, and then it's going to shoot up again, but it's always going to shoot up higher than the previous high. It's just going to continuously do that until it either explodes or we get inflation under control. Like one of those two things has to happen. Either it's going to explode or it's going to get uh, brought under control at some point. But we're nowhere near the peak of this thing. Like nowhere near. Because nothing has changed yet. The Russian war is still going on. The world is still boycotting uh, fuel and oil exports uh, from Russia. So there's still less oil than there is demand for oil which means what has changed in the economy to 
even make you think that, that it's peaked and it's now only going to come down. Nothing's changed. The things that led to the increase in oil prices is still all there. They've not gone away. So to think that it's peaked and it's now just going to come down, something else would have had to have happened in order for this to ultimately change. Nothing has changed yet. It's all still the same equation. And it's actually just going to get worse because right now the world is still technically importing from Russia. Like no one has quit importing oil from Russia. But if those oil imports do eventually come into effect, it's probably going to get a hell of a lot worse. Would you rather be remembered as the guy on the right or the guy on the left? Dude, that guy is smoking yeah, that cigarette like a fucking joking, boss. But it's true. In fact, whenever I see that picture on the left, what's funny is I always... Uh, Trending, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the first time chat, dude. Really appreciate that. It's speculative the mod can change it, but I wouldn't trust that. That's true. So there is actually the one thing, but this you sort of need trust for, but there is a, a sort of... Okay, first, yes, speculative uh, demand can absolutely have a change uh, in that, but uh, there's also the thing of the psychological thoughts, right? And the psychological impact of things. So if you could manage to convince people that there, there's nothing to be afraid of, you could stop a recession, technically speaking. Because recessions are just psychological reactions. Um, people get spooked and they may stop spending their money. We just discussed this earlier. Uh, and they usually happen for good reasons. They, they usually do happen because, uh, you know, governments were printing way too much money and, uh, you know, uh, there's wars going on, so people are a little bit more afraid. So there's actual things that impact that decision, but the ultimate thing that leads to recessions is usually psychological because of bad governments and, and all the rest of it. Uh, so you could technically have a, a sort of, like, just they could speculate that they need more than what they actually need and then they overproduce and that overproduction then leads to greater supply than actual demand which will drop the price that would be a good thing but right now the reason i don't trust that is because most of the opec nations the the, the nations that do produce oil they're benefiting greatly from, from increased oil prices if anything they're going to want to keep the oil prices as high as possible because they're making boatloads of fucking cash they're not going to want to uh, decrease the oil price. So you're kind of, we're kind of banking on scumbag nations doing the right thing. And I don't know if that's ever going to fucking happen. <laughs> Always envision AOC asking Paul Volcker, that Paul Volcker smoking the cigar. What is he going to do specifically to help the economic conditions for the trans community? Just... Picture that just for a moment. <laughs> what do you think Paul Volcker's response would be? But back to this video. I don't, I the one thing, so I don't really care for the guy's uh, like social issues. I like his economy, uh, like his economic explanations and shit. I don't give a fuck about his social issues. They, I don't care, but it is weird how a lot of this, so I saw an article the other day speaking about how inflation is harming the, the the gay community. And I thought to myself, wait, inflation is harming everyone. Why would you not in your article just say inflation is harming fucking everyone? Because I don't think like gay people have a higher inflation rate than than, than straight people do. We, we have the literal same amount of inflation. We're all getting fucked as a result of inflation. This is the one thing that we can all fucking unite against and say, fuck that. Whether you're gay, straight, trans, doesn't matter. We all can agree, fuck inflation. Like this is the unifier, bro. This is the way we all get together and we fucking sit around a fire and sing Kumbaya, because fuck inflation. But no, we have to have these articles that sort of signal out a group that's completely arbitrary because if you're going to say, if you're going to write an article about how inflation is harming the gay community, then you could write a, an article saying how the uh, inflation is harming the white community, how inflation is harming white men, how inflation is harming white women, how inflation is harming black men, how inflation is harming black women, how inflation is harming trans women, how inflation is harming trans men, how inflation is harming children, how inflation is harming pets, and all of it would be fucking true because for every single breathing human being on the planet, inflation is a fucking problem at the moment. 
like there's no I, I don't think it's hard. the only group that I would say you could probably write an article on who would probably be a hell of a lot worse uh, or worsely affected by inflation would be old people. I think if you're above sort of 60, 65, if you're retired, I think inflation is going to fucking wreck you, uh, especially if you're poorer. Now, the oh, actually, there's two groups. Uh, and Maxator, thank you so much for mentioning that. There's two groups. The one is older people. The other is uh, poor people. If you are already poor, this is going to fuck you. That you are wrecked because there's nothing that can you do not have anything to fall back on you have nothing uh, so it is going to be harsh on the poor those are the only two groups that we should actually give a fuck about are those groups because we need to figure out how do we help those two groups survive this everyone else uh, is in the same boat we're all fucked equal that if he could choose jerome powell would want to be remembered as someone like Paul Volcker, someone that had the intestinal fortitude to do what and is true, right. but also, okay. Let's I mean, food chart. is going so to be fucking hard. It's going to impact you, King Julian. This is a chart of the R star interest rate. And I'll go into why this is so important in just a moment. The hell is the, the R star left, interest rate? 0% up to 6%. So 19, call it 64, 65. It's up at 6%. And then it goes What's down. our star? So trends all the way down to where we are today or where we were in 2020 because they stopped publishing this. Does anyone now, know what our star inflation is? Percent or 50 basis points. Is that the that's the American like uh see the Jabara thinks microtransaction on the only mortal is not a bad thing. Alvarez, yes, we already covered that. Yes, absolutely. Our star inflation rate though. It's the R star rate. So our star would mean something else though. I'm assuming this is your... In South Africa, it's called the prime lending rate, I think. And that's the official interest rate of the central bank. It's the prime lending rate. So it from that, banks then work out their own interest rates that you're going to... Like, consumers are going to pay. So I'm assuming our star rate is just... That's the official rate from the federal government sort of thing. So going back to what this is, this is one of the key models that the Fed uses to try to determine what real rates should be. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Specifically, it's the I real rates. All right, all right, all right. Obviously, that's very correlated. Trek Star, that's what you said as well, I think. Fed funds rate. And I say what it, quote unquote, should be. So in their minds, they're trying to determine at what rate of real interest is the economy at a perfect level okay. where you're maximizing on employment, you're keeping the unemployment rate as low as possible, while at the yeah. same time, you're creating a monetary condition or environment for the CPI inflation to be relatively low, okay. let's say 2% or 3%. So going back to 1980, 81, and this is key. Um our store, Patty Lynn, thank you so much. Our store is the real neutral rate of interest that equ equilibrates, equilibrates the economy in the long run. Less formally, it is the real interest rate that is neither expansionary nor contra contractionary when the economy is at full employment. So it assumes 100% employment. This is when Volcker took rates up high enough to smash inflation or to break the back of inflation. Uh -huh. Our star was around 4%. Okay. And if you remember, Paul Volcker took the Fed funds rate up to about 18%. That's, so let's just that's say- rough, dude. Back 18% means that your house goes up to 20, probably 21, depending on what you get, prime plus what. That, that dude, that, that fucks people right up the butthole. The no loop. Here. The CPI was running at 14%. Our star was 4%, and this is most likely why Paul Volcker took rates up to 18 Oh, Pat Lynn, that is the smartest thing you can do. If you want to buy a house right now, fucking fix it. Like, get it fixed. Because if you if you have a fixed interest rate, sure, 
fake st- has, has a lot of downsides, at least in South Africa. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world. But for example, if you if you have a fixed interest rate in South Africa, you can't lend against your house. So if you wanted to open a business, you can't go to the bank and say, hey, um, you know, give me, uh, it, it, I, I want to borrow, say, 500,000 Rand because I want to open a business. The, the bank will just go, no, you're on a fixed interest rate. We're not lending you fuck all, right? Um, if you want to borrow against your house, you have to be on a, a sort of, like, uh, what's it called in English? Like a adjustable rate. Uh, that's the only way you can borrow against your home. Um, but if you are, during massive inflation, on a fixed home loan, if everything goes up, it means your money is also going to go up even more, right? You're also going to get more money. Eventually, your 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 business or your job is going to pay you more. And you're actually going to be able to pay off your house so much easier because you're interest rate and the amount of money that you have to pay back to the bank remains fixed at say a thousand dollars a month but your your income have say gone from ten thousand to forty thousand because of like interest rate or inflation explosion because your company is charging more for products they're paying more for salaries and shit like that and people's demanding more salaries all the crap so you actually get to pay off your house that much quicker just because you know you're you're fucking going apeshit. The dollar is debt-based currency, technically speaking. If enough Americans default on their loans, the dollar would crash irrelevant of the rest of the market and its trust. I think, isn't the whole world right now basically debt-backed or, or debt-based? Refining my mortgage, mortgage to 3.75% years ago, and it's fixed. Tricks are buying a house right now. Swanky Tiger, you could. There's a lot of rich people. So I, I, I watch a couple of, like, super rich people whenever they talk about, like, finances on, on YouTube. And the super rich right now are making an incredible amount of debt. Like, they are going out of their way to make as much debt as possible. Because during inflation, debt is king. If you have debt that you have to pay back at a specific interest rate, and you manage to get that debt fixed, you win. Because inflation just means more money uh, to actually pay back all of that. So people get fucking stupid rich during inflationary times you just need to know what you're doing percent again remember this r star is what the real rate of interest should be meaning the rate of interest above and beyond consumer price inflation so now that we understand that this is one of the main models the fed uses mm-hmm. let's think about it in terms of what we're dealing with today so the cpi is 8.6% so if that's quite we high, but okay, he's at the Fed, including Jerome Powell. And if Jerome Powell wants his legacy to be Paul Volcker instead of Arthur Burns, in his mind, he's thinking <laughs> that the Fed funds rate needs to be at 9.1%. That's, that's rough least already. Your treasury would have to be at 9.1%, which would mean Fed funds would have to be very close to that rate of interest. Uh I'm not saying that Jerome Powell is going to take it that high, but I am saying that most likely he's going to try to take it a lot higher. (laughs) He's going to try to take it to a point where potentially it could crush asset prices inadvertently Mm -hmm. and crush the economy to the point where we could see deflation. To take it to the next step, let's go to the internet and see how even in the Fed's own words, they admit this R-star tool, if you will, is a very blunt instrument that can have massive unintended consequences. This is from the Dallas Fed's own website when they're discussing the R-star rate or the neutral rate, as it's sometimes called. Despite the fact that judging the level of the neutral rate is inherently uncertain and imprecise. Many of us at the Federal Reserve pay close attention to the various models that seek to estimate this rate. The reason is that despite the relatively wide confidence bands around these estimates, they can provide an indication, albeit what? Imperfect. (laughs) Why do they always write things so fucking weird, dude? Just say shit, like in normal speak. 
So they're admitting to you that this key. You could probably condense that entire saying, like in that entire paragraph, down to a sentence. Their words, not mine. So is it a stretch to believe that Jerome Powell will take rates up to a point where he breaks something? I think everybody agrees on that. But the yeah. level where he breaks something is far too high. They overshoot the goal, which takes us back to the process. It's so that normal fucks like us don't understand it. One and step number two. Let me be very, very clear. I am not saying that we will see deflation in the United States. This is not a prediction. My base case is that we see some disinflation, meaning the level of inflation going down slightly in Q3, maybe Q4, and then mm -hmm. they come back in with monetary policy and fiscal, and we see another wave of inflation, meaning the CPI going higher and higher. But I think there is a as soon as we get Final Fantasy done, a possibility that is far above a zero percent probability <laughs> that uh -huh. we do see deflation and something very similar to what we saw in the 1940s. Dude, this is scary shit. Like the life life is scary right now. Five percent. Why the fuck was I born was in this era? God deflation. damn it. I think every single one of you watching this video right now would say that the Fed is prone to making errors. Yeah. Maybe you would go so far to say that they're all idiots. They're all morons. I would okay, say that, fine. yeah. <laughs> well, if they're morons and idiots that can cause inflation, maybe, just maybe, they're idiots and morons that can inadvertently cause deflation as well. For more content, I agree help with you, you Digit. Build wealth and thrive in what I mean, like I said, it's just it's scary to me uh, that this is what we're heading towards. And the thing I think that that scares me is the fact that no one seems to know. I follow a lot of economists and some more mathematical than others. Like this guy is the least mathematical guy. He tends to just break things down in a way that helps you understand it. Uh, but almost none of them, like all of them agree things are about to get really fucking bad. But none of them seem to be able to agree on just how fucking bad things are about to fucking get or how it's gonna get that bad. Because there's like inflation or deflation or interest rates crushing the economy into a recession, ultimately leading to depressions. It's, everyone seems to have a different idea of how things are about to get fucked. It's just that no one really knows how, like exactly what is gonna fuck everything. And that means that you can't plan for anything. Like you, you can't say, because uh, if it's inflation, there's ways that you can actually plan to make money out of an inflationary uh, scenario. If it's deflation, just literally keep everything in cash and you'll make money out of a deflationary scenario. Uh, if it's stagflation, it becomes harder, but it can still be done. Um, if it's recession, uh, I'm sure there's ways to do it with re recessions. Um, Depressions, on the other hand, that could be the one that, that I don't know how many people would be able to survive that. In Eurozone, nobody talk about that. And we sit on the 8% inflation and EU Central Bank uh, raising interest rates by 8%. It's rare as fuck. Yeah, it's the first time in like 20 years, I think. Buy gold and hold for now. Gold is probably your best bet, actually. I say without being too optimistic, I would say another 5, 10 years until then. Digit, I don't... No, I, I don't think we're going to continue going like this for ten, five to ten years. I think things are going to happen literally end of this year, probably next year. We're going to enter into a full global recession. And I think this is going to be the recession that lasts the longest. Um, mainly because all the previous ones, they artificially stopped it. So basically they just started printing a crap ton of fucking money and this alleviated any recession fears. The issue is no bank in the world is currently in a position to print more money. They've already printed themselves into fuck during the COVID pandemic. No amount of printing is going to fix this because in 2008, printing money, 1.6 trillion, giving that to the banks, solved the problem. You had no demand issues or supply, supply chain issues. There were more than enough products. People were just a little scared. And of course... Uh, the economy was busy crashing, so more money into the economy just meant people were now great and everything was fine. Uh, 
even if you print more money now, so even if you go and you print 10 trillion dollars, 10 trillion extra dollars does not put toilet paper in the shop. It does not increase the oil supply that you have. So 10,000 or 10 trillion dollars is just going to mean that those prices are going to skyrocket even more because Previously, maybe only 10 million people needed toilet paper and you already only had enough toilet paper for 8 million. Now you've printed 10 trillion dollars. Now 20 million people want toilet paper, but you still just have 8 million fucking toilet paper. You, you, you can't give 20 million people. So printing money is just going to lead to an even bigger fucking uh, inflation bubble because you still have the same amount of product, but you now have more people that want the fucking product. Um... <clears throat> It's, this is one of those that the economy is finally coming home to roost. We've, uh, we've tried to print ourselves out of recessions because no one wants to be the president that oversees a recession. No one wants their legacy to end on a recession. This is why George W. Bush gave the 1.9 trillion or 1.6 trillion dollars, uh, to the banks after the 2008 crash, because why wouldn't you? Do you want to be the president that leaves office having crashed the US economy? Of fucking course not. This is why Barack Obama during 2014, 2013 ultimately caved and, uh, you know, directed the Fed to once again start uh, lowering rates. Because again, you don't want to be the president that oversees a recession. Uh, Donald Trump in 2016 also started printing money when COVID happened, started printing crazy money because you don't want to be the president that oversees a recession. You will go down in history as being blamed for the recession. This is why Biden keeps printing money because no one wants to, the problem for Biden is I think the economy have reached the point where you can't print yourself out of it. So Biden is going to be the guy that goes down in history as being the reason for the recession. He's going to be blamed for it. And as much as I don't like Biden because he's a fucking politician, I don't like any politicians. This isn't his fault. He, he, it's not his fault. This is not even the fault of Russia uh, and Ukraine. This is a fault that started in 1999 with the tech, bu tech bubble crisis. When the tech bubble burst, we printed money in order to fix it. That was uh, Bill Clinton, if I'm not mistaken. Then in 2008, when uh, the housing market happened, we printed money in order to stop that from happening. That was George W. Bush. So Democrats, Republicans, both equally fucking guilty. The bubbles kept popping, meaning that the markets are sick. There's a sickness within the market. The bubbles are popping because the sickness is accelerating. And what do we do? We print more money to create more bubbles. So we're basically giving the disease, the, the, the sick patient more of the fucking disease to try and heal the sick patient. I think the patient is terminal now. The problem is humans are stupid. So Biden is going to go down in history as the guy that caused the greatest recession in the history of fucking America. And no one's going to look towards Bush, towards uh, Clinton, towards uh, Obama, Trump. No, well, some people might blame Trump because he's blamed for everything else. But at the end of the day, no one's going to realize that this is a problem that started long before Biden even reached office. The, Biden is basically just the fall guy now. He, he's getting ready to be blamed for everything and go down in history as the worst president that the United States have ever seen because so many people are going to get fucked. And everyone's calling for him to fix things. How? How do you fix how do you fix something that that you you didn't create? Nor is there even a fix. Like no one knows how to fix this. The fix is a recession. But you're trying to not have a recession. So how do you not have a recession when the only cure for the disease is the recession? <laughs> kind of fuck, right? Uh, am I only included as investment bankers? Keep creating hype bubbles around markets that will never manifest, especially not at the rate that these lunatics desire. Knights, the issue is, if you print money, that money goes to invest in ba investment bankers that, you know, it's not your money, you can do whatever you want, right? And most of these investment banks know that they are too big to fail, so they have nothing to lose. What should have happened after 2008 is that all of those investment bankers should have been fucking sued and taken to jail and should have closed down. Yes, it would have shocked the American economy. The world economy would have gone into a massive recession, but new banks would have come up. 
new bankers would have come up, and this time they would probably be a little bit smarter than the ones that ultimately crashed the economy. At the end of the day, no one got in, no one got into trouble. Only one bank, bank as far as you know, went bankrupt. Uh, everyone else just kept making money as if nothing had ever fucking happened. Um, we created this problem, but well, not we. They created this problem. The sad part is we're fucking paying for it. It, it feels good. Right? It feels great. We're going to be the ones paying for it. While Biden, Trump, Bar uh, Barack Obama, Bush, while they're going to live in their mansions and uh, they're going to count the money in their bank accounts and probably going to write more books and shit like that, uh, the normal guy on the street, the normal guy that had nothing to do with any of this, we're going to be the ones to get fucking wrecked. And then they're going to be the ones, the rich people are going to be the ones that say, hey, we have the answer. We can save you. And it's going to sort of like, dude, you got us here. I don't need you saving me. If this is what saving me looks like, fucking let me drown. I don't need you any longer. Just leave me the fuck alone. But they're going to have the answer because they always have the fucking answer. Even though, you know, they're the reason the problem exists in the first place. It's a fucking nightmare, and we are all just unwilling participants in this fucking game that is called Fuck Everyone. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, one can only laugh at this shit. Uh, we need to use our own oil, not send to others. Uh, talking about printing money in Germany is becoming a pain regardless to have money in the ATM to get cash. All the debit card machines are having haven't w been working because of an outdated version, etc. Uh, we've had a lot of banking outages as well here in South Africa, which is kind of weird. Like almost every single bank is having a bank, uh, like a bank outage for the last two weeks. Uh, every few days, it, it just goes tits up. So I'm not entirely sure what the fuck's going on there, if anything, really. Uh, we'll probably have to wait and see. 